Here we've got an application and we're receiving email from an Office 365 Exchange account. Here I've got the Declaration of Independence as part of the email. Let's look at the original email and see how we used Microsoft's Flow scripting to be able to move data from something in Outlook into QuickBase. And then I'll tell you why we wanted to use Flow instead of QuickBase Sync. Okay, so let's go back over to here. So I've got this email and I tried to make it as uh, complex as possible, especially this stuff right here. These needed to be escaped so that they would not be uh, stopping the API uh, ad record. Uh, whenever they saw these, if we don't escape these, it'll stop dead in its tracks. These things are, are caustic for uh, uh, XML conversions as they get added in through a, an API. And it's not just QuickBase. This is a universal thing even to Microsoft's world as well. So anyway, here's this email. So what I've done is I've sent it. And, and let me move over here. And this is what it created. It, there's a from, I mapped over the to, the subject, and I purposely put these extra characters in it to hose the process, if that was so. And you can see down below here the, the rest of the data from the Declaration of Independence is pasted in there. So let's go look at the, um, the flow that made this um, such. So, so I've got this uh, flow right here, and you can see 34 minutes ago I... I um, I received this, let me click on it. Oh, uh, nice function is when you can see that it has been launched like that, you can go in and actually see what the outcome of this was. And this was a post to this destination, and this was the body of the post, and I'll show you that in a second. And you can see field nine was the subject, and field 10 is the body, and I put all this stuff in there, and it includes this. Let's go further down. Um, you can see I, I got a status code of 200. Everything was fine. And down here, this is the feedback from API add record. This is the XML um, response when you submit something and there's no error. Okay, let's go and edit the flow and see what was, went into making this. Well, when an email lands and when it enters the folder in my inbox as send to email send email to quickbase and you can select other folders if you'd like to i want to take that content uh, or at least the body of it and if i click here you can see over here there's the body and you can put the body right there and i want to use this converter here html to text if i click here uh, and say i want to add an action I would be able to find HTML to text. So I'll say HTML to text. So I'm looking for that function. And so you can see it's right here. So anyway, let's finish. Let's go down because I'm not going to introduce a second one here. So here it is, HTML. It's taking the body. And now it's stripping out the HTML and passing it on down here. Click. So let's go further down here. So this is uh, a post. And it's going to this endpoint right here. That's the table I'm going into. It's a quick base action. And I'm using API add record. And it's an application XML. And so here's my, uh, this is what's cut and pasted right from the um, API guide for QuickBase, this piece here. Now you've got an app token or a user token rather. And you also have an app token. Um, here and you can see field 7 is the form field ID and I clicked in here and came over here and I grabbed the from right here and I grabbed the to and the subject and but this one is one that was giving us problems if you have an ampersand a, a quotation mark a less than or greater than sign there are a bunch of those there and uh, let me grab this for a second this is under expression. You click on expression. See if you're over here, dynamic content, you have options. But now over here, replace is one of those options. So let's grab this control copy. And I'm going to bring it over here. And actually, I already did it here. And there it is. Replace, replace, replace. But it's taking 
that field that was HTML to text and taking the body of it and, tra and saying, if you find an ampersand, put this in its place instead. If you find a less than, put this in its place, this uh, and this place. And I think we've got, uh, uh, there's a Wikipedia um, uh, uh, file here, if I, could, if I could ever find it, and I'm not gonna be able to find it right now. Um, but uh, this, these are the, the uh, characters that are reserved for XML. So it immediately says, wait a minute, I need to do something. I, I just can't take it at face value. So this swaps out those ASCII values um, into it. So let me close this or cancel here. So it uh, passes those values uh, in that scenario. So I'm going to close it, not save it there because I've already got it running. You can see 41 minutes ago it ran. Um, if you go into these, um, you can um, look at the one that's 48 one minutes ago and resubmit it there. This will be the second time here. Now this takes a couple of minutes to go. This could be two minutes, three minutes, ten minutes. Uh, it, uh, usually it's about two or three minutes. So we could pause for a second and then we'll see the second one. Okay, we're back here and look, something succeeded 29 seconds ago. Let's go into it. Let's go down into the actual result. And uh, there's the Declaration of Independence again. Let's go further. And it says there was no error in this process. Now, if I come back over to um, the actual application, I should have two records in here when I click on this. And I now have two records. And there's the first, go down, and there's the second. So anyway, so back to why we're doing this and not using sync. If you use SAML authentication with Microsoft, having to whitelist QuickBase's sync requests to come get it, it ends up being problematic um, because we do not provide a fixed IP address. Um, that uh, says, hey, all the SAML requests are coming from this IP address. So that was the challenge, and uh, their company's IT team wanted to uh, stay um, and not provide any other option other than whitelisting, and since uh, it didn't happen that way, uh, this is an alternative. So you're actually using the API ad record to make that happen.